Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, after a strange passing, well, things seemed kind of off from the very get-go. And the going got getting real quick when detectives were introduced to a woman named Jessie Kurshevsky. While Jessie seemed to be the most caring person imaginable, deep down, and by deep down I just mean skin deep, she was anything but caring and friendly. She was cold, and she was clackety clackety calculating. And very much ready with the whoppers. That means some bizarre ass lies. He thinks you fell there for the money. I did. I swear to God, I did. It sure it tends to look like that on I know. paper. And I get when it. we meet with the DA, he goes... I'm telling you, do you, honest to God, when I talked to you guys last night, I felt so much better. I could tell. Because I actually honestly told you guys, and I finally just gave up. And I, I'm telling you, I did not give it to her to kill her. I, and I, I did well, not put it in Why did you give it to her then? I gave it to her because she seemed to think it was a good idea. Let's give it a go. Betrayal, theft, murder, and even more theft. That's this case kind of in a nutshell. And it takes us to the city of Pewaukee, Wisconsin. Pewaukee, a city of about 15,000 people, lies just outside of Milwaukee. And before I've even started, I've kind of run out of things to say about the place. It's fine. We're going to Pewaukee October 3rd, 2018, because that is when, if you can believe it, a 911 call, it was placed. The person on the line was saying they'd found something horrible in a lonely little neighborhood on the outskirts of Pewaukee. 62-year-old Lynn Hernan was found in her condo home in Meadowgrass Circle, slouched back in her recliner chair on October 3rd, 2018. She was covered in the crushed residue of several of her own prescribed medications. According to her best friend who had just found her, Lynn had been complaining for months and months about severe stomach pain, and apparently the pain was just so bad. Lynn had been considering offing herself just because she couldn't handle it anymore, and you know, your first instinct when you arrive and you see this shit is like, okay, well, I guess she followed through with it. Lynn was pronounced dead shortly after the emergency services arrived. Though at first it appeared obvious, the truth of what really happened to Lynn Hernan would take a little bit of time for everything to come out. Uh, it would, you know, there'd be a couple of months before the first set of interviews were even properly done. And what would come out would be a roller coaster. A carnival of stupidity, that's for sure. It began with the toxicology report from the post-mortem exam showing that Lynn had insanely high levels of tetrahydrozoline in her system. Now, you may have heard of that before. Tetrahydrozoline is a chemical found in the over-the-counter eye drops, like Visine, that kind of stuff. The red shows it. We need Visine, the only eye drop with tetrahydrozoline. It soothes and gets the red out. Visine gets the red out. When a few drops are popped onto the AL eyeball, it's great for helping with red, sore, tired eyes and cloudy vision. The type of thing that comes often, you know, with bad allergies, a cold, but if it's ingested orally, well, uh, that's another story entirely. So much of another story, I actually made a video. A kind of compilation of stories of people who did this. Funnily enough, the Jesse Kurshevsky story was in that video, but it hadn't... The full insanity of Jesse hadn't been revealed back then. Ingesting Visine can cause all sorts of issues, including memory loss, loss of consciousness, vomiting, diarrhea, internal bleeding, and yep, even death. Not a pleasant way to go, like, at all. Even a person who was very determined would probably think twice about doing that. So the discovery of so much of it in Lynn's system set off several alarm bells for authorities and led to the medical examiner recording Lynn's cause of death, not as a suicide, which was expected, but as suspicious, perhaps even homicide. Blockstrand Communications, it's Blockstrand Communications, it's Jeff. Um, yes, I'm calling. Um, I'm trying to find out some information, and I don't have a case number of who is working on it. Okay. I have a last name and the person who it is on, and basically I'm just trying to find out some information. Okay, what, what kind of information are you looking for? I'm trying to figure out who's working on her case. 
Okay, what kind of case? I don't know. The medical examiner just gave me this phone number and said it was referred to you guys. Okay, so is it reference to death then if you were talking to the medical examiner? Okay. Yes. And what is the subject's last name? H-E-R-N-A-N. And the first name is Lynn. And your last name? Um, K U R C U E W S K I. And your first name? Jesse, J E S S Y. All right, Jesse, I will have a deputy give you a call, okay? Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, bye. All right, bye. So it was natural that Jesse Kurshevsky, who was one of Lynn's you know, closest, ooh, best little buddies, uh, and Lynn, Jesse was also Lynn's caregiver. You know, it was only natural, and also the person of honor. It was only natural that Jesse would be, you know, here, listen, got a few questions to ask you. And this was, you know, uh, Lynn was found dead in October. This was in the summer then that followed. Lynn and Jesse had been close throughout pretty much the last few years of their lives. It was in fact Jesse's mother, Jennifer Flowers. That's how Lynn and Jesse had met each other and knew each other. Lynn was about 18 years older than Jesse. And Lynn was like a mother to, to Jesse, like her second mother. Now, Lynn had been a beautician, but it seems she ran into both physical and mental health issues. COPD, depression, and now, even at a young age uh, of 62, she needed a caregiver and a nurse. For the last four to five years, Lynn was only able to eat soup due to her intestinal issues and had signed a do not resuscitate order. So the fact that Lynn had passed, you know, that wasn't surprising. It was what was found in their system after she passed. That was kind of like, you know, the old, the old noodle scratcher. Aaron, this is Jesse and her mother. I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. Hi, Jesse. Yeah, I'm sitting right there. We're going to inquire about it. We'll grab you another chair. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I didn't hear Aaron. Aaron. Okay. Nice and to meet you. He was well. Yeah, she was a good friend with Lynn, so she kind of wanted to know what's going on. Thank you. Uh, theoretically, I am assigned to this case. Okay. But um, we have, we got a new boss here, a little bit ago, and kind of changed protocols on us. Because okay. back in the day, I remember doing this a long time. Sure. Um, we didn't look at this stuff. Yeah, me kind of called out and said you're all good, and now he's has us investigating a kind of back burner. Sure. Um. So when you call, yeah, I knew the name, and I had glanced over it. Yeah. But I'm waiting for the ME to call me and say, hey, we're all done. That's perfect. It's signed. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay. So I was a little um, surprised when you sent the phone. You had concerns about the hospital. I, you know, when I talked to the medical examiner last, uh -huh. um, well, I talked to him numerous times. The first couple times, they said there was a few issues as far as health-wise. She had, like, five things. Uh -huh. Then they said they were weighing on toxicology. Uh -huh. And then they said um, they sent out second samples or tissues or something. And then they stopped saying anything, and they said I had to contact you guys. And that's when I got the so, boss. Okay. <laughs> and I'm oh. going, I just want to know, like, because they kind of, like, weren't sure we didn't know if it was a suicide or if it was something medical. So she was, like, an aunt, a second mom to me. She didn't have kids. She's known her her whole life. Yeah. Right. And, that's kind of, and that's why you were helping her out. Yeah. And so what Jesse expected to be a straightforward follow-up interview turned out to be something very different when the detective began pointing at certain issues surrounding Lynn's death. The other person in this interview is Jennifer Flowers. That's Jesse's mom and a good friend to Lynn, the victim. She was just tired of being sick. Mm -hmm. And she was frustrated because she wasn't getting the answers. Once we hear from the IV, I'll let you know what's going on. Um, but do, do you know out of curiosity? They have up to a year. And it, it, they almost I mean, it's, it's not like... You know, it, it doesn't do anything. It's more so, I just wish I knew, you know. It's more so to know if I could have done something had I better. That's the hardest part. We've, we've you know, a lot of things. I'd like to know if it's a suicide, but I'd still like to know what it, what led up to her being sick for the last five years yeah. of her life. Yeah. Why? Medical problems. If it was in her head. I'll um, ask the doc when it comes time. Yeah. Um, while Jesse did walk out of the interview room, a free woman that day, it wasn't long at all before she had the full attention of the law. Because, you know, doing some looking into Jesse and company, the police found some weird shit. The same day that Lynn Hernan died, it just so happened that Jesse's mom, Jennifer Flowers, got herself a brand new 75-inch TV. Not only that, but Lynn's Jeep 
was also later signed over to Jesse's mom too. You know, usually in murder cases, we see all kinds of reprehensible behavior of the perpetrator doing everything they can to, to cover up what they had done. And sometimes they do such a good job of it, they nearly get away with it. And in fact, I'm sure lots of people did do such a good job covering up what they had done that we have no idea that they're murderers because the case is unsolved. This is not one of those cases. Jesse was so far from getting away with it, it would honestly be funny if it wasn't a murder involved. With each choice and each lie, it was honestly like she was she was determined to make herself look as guilty as possible. She was constantly calling the coroner, the sheriff, you know, probing questions. Hey, wh what's going on? You know, what do you what do you know? What do you know about? It seems like basically it seems like Jesse Krzyzewski was only too excited to go to jail. Couldn't wait. I'm really starting to think you guys think I did something or I did something wrong. And if you knew Lynn, you knew the way she was. I didn't do anything, and I'll tell you that honestly. I don't. Know I love her. her to death. I don't know her. <laughs> That's why, I'm, yeah. that's why I'm asking you a lot of questions, because yeah. I don't know who she was. I get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's one of the disadvantages of doing this job is you know her intimately. Yeah, I know her very well. Um, and I'm investigating a death. I get it. Um, and there's an anomaly in her toxicology. There's a drug <laughs> in her system that's not supposed to be there. What would that be? Um, it's called tetrahydrazine. What is that? The biggest red flag, though, waving in the case of Lynn Hernan's death, I mean, other than Jesse's increasingly deranged behavior, and she literally could not make herself look more guilty if she tried, it wasn't just that, it was actually another person, a guy named Andrew Pozo, who kind of set off alarm bells. See, Andrew's family, the Pozo family, and Lynn's family, super close, growing up. Like, Andrew knew Lynn since he was, you know, as knee-high to an Adam's hopper or grasshopper. So, he, since he was small, right? And you know, even as he grew and grew and grew, he would still hang out with Lynn all the time. She, he would call her his aunt, even though they weren't biologically related at all. She would give him some money, she would help him out, you know, when he would go to college and all that stuff. He would still visit Lynn all the time. They would hang out, they would shoot the shit. They were, they were, they were close. And sometimes Lynn, you know, she didn't have any kids of her own and she knew she was, you know, getting very sick. She would sometimes bring up her will to Andrew, because she really, like they were so close, she wanted Andrew to be really well taken care of. Andrew would always say, listen, I'd rather have you around than give a shit about what money you have or what I would get in the event of your death. He did not, he was not interested in that at all. And so they never ended up discussing it in detail, but Andrew knew he, like, that when Lynn passed, he would probably get a nice chunk of ching Somewhere, like she kind of hinted somewhere between 10 grand and 50 grand. Uh, is that that's, that would be common to him. So you can imagine that when Lynn passed away and Jesse came to him, because Jesse had somehow magically been given the power of attorney, Jesse, you know, went to Andrew and says, listen, what kind of shit I look after, you know, settling Lynn's estate, she had debts. Oh, she had debts, Maron, debts up the wazoo. You know, she had bills that she hadn't paid for ages, um, and her house and everything. It turns out we're only left with like 26 grand, and you'll only get half of that. So it was like a little less than what Andrew was expecting. He knew Lynn close with wasn't like wealthy by any means, but you know, she had money. He was less upset about him getting shafted and more upset about like someone stealing her money. He was so concerned he contacted the authorities and lawyers who kind of fobbed him off. Then he started contacting Jesse for proof and more info about what was going on. Jesse tried to fob him off too, but eventually she's like, all right, come over. She printed off a load of papers and documents and was like, listen, this is this is this bill, this is this bill, blah, blah, blah. So he was like, all right, fine. This is, you're sure, clearly showing me proof of where the money is going and what she had. And so then Jesse got Andrew to sign you know, an agreement so that he would get half of the 26 grand that was left. It wouldn't be until investigators had a goo at all this and they were like, yeah, Jesse bullshitted through all of this. And those are all forged documents. She was making it up. She was on Microsoft Word and Comic Sans font doing whatever she wanted. Not only had been Jesse siphoning money from Lynn's accounts for years, she'd been opening up bank accounts in Lynn's name and then giving herself the money, opening up accounts in her own name using Lynn's credit cards, applying for loans in Lynn's name with herself as a recipient of that loan, basically bleeding her completely dry. Pretty soon, Jesse found herself in bracelets charged with murder and theft. And you know, it's believed Jesse got almost $300,000 out of Lynn. There was one bank account that had over $100,000 in it when the police finally got to it. 
there was like less than $88 left. But of course, you know, when questioned about this, Jesse would say, no, oh, 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 slow your roll there, folks. I never purchased anything. I never did anything without Lynn's approval. Of course not. She's, you must be joking. It's all, all, everything on there is for Always permission. Always. I know better. <laughs> I come, I know better. Okay. There's a reason I don't want to be sitting in these. I know better, and I really... And you know why I asked, right? I, I feel like you're asking because of my history. That's why. I feel like I'm sitting in cups for a reason now. I'll be very honest with you guys. I feel like this is all mixed together. You're in cups for this policy. No, but I mean, I feel like I was brought in because of this. I didn't put two and two together until I saw you guys, and I'm wondering why I was going to Waukesha. To everything I've ever done, I've had permission from Lynn. I mean, she has, in writing, a million different things because of that. I've never forged her name. I've never nothing. Jesse's relationship with the truth is so flexible, it would make a gymnast shit themselves out of jealousy. Um, it's called tetrahydrazine. What is that? I'm commonly known as eye drops. <laughs> she uses eye drops all the time. What does she use them for? She uses them for her eyes. But yeah. she went through them like crazy, which didn't make sense. Yeah? Yeah. Like, when you say a lot, how much was she using? I probably brought her four bottles while she was in the hospital. Yeah. She put them in her eyes all the time. All the time. And I was like, I've never met somebody that goes through it. She's like, my eyes are always dry. Always. What kind of eye drops are you buying her? Whatever kind. She didn't care. She didn't have like a history. What would that, what would that do anyway? I don't get it. Well, apparently, it's not good for you to use lots of eye drops. And that's what the medical examiner is concerned about. <laughs> Did they look in her house? Because she has boxes of them. Does or she? had. Yeah. So she was well known for eye drops. Okay. Yeah. I killed her is the eye drops. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Um, you do think someone would have went in there and, and tried to kill her with eye drops? No. Put it in her in her drink? I swear to God, I don't. Her vodka? No. Does anyone have a motive? No. The medical examiner tends to think someone killed her. Are you serious? Yeah. Why is that? Because they didn't find any Visine bottles next to her. They're all over her house. But she didn't really move around. That she, was, that's what we were told is she didn't really move. So the medical examiner tends to think... I can honestly think, tell you, I know they're thinks all that someone over gave it to her. No. I was the only one there. I, I, I was, was there. I didn't see any Visine I did not give her... They're all in her bathroom. Uh, and there was two on her nightstand. Not, two. not next to her. They were on her nightstand next to her. I swear to God, I know they were, because she always kept them right there. Well, there's a picture of the nightstand. The medical examiner does a real thorough job when it comes I, to I agree medication. with what you're saying, I 100%. But and no I don't know anybody who would do that to her, and I'm not lying. I don't know anybody who would want to do that. Who I don't know. I'm asking you. I don't know anybody. I don't know either. That's why I'm asking you. I have... Her interviews with the detectives are a thing of beautiful comedy. The worst thing is, investigators didn't even have to call Jesse in. She kept turning up herself. Basically, she would ask to talk to officers, give them a statement, swearing blind, this is the absolute truth. Then they would tell her, okay, there's some things wrong with your story. She'd go away, have a little think about it, pop back into the police station and give them her new version of events. Rinse and repeat over and over and over again. I'm trying to look at this as a murder. That's just insane to me. And this is why I'm here. One of the reasons. Do you guys think I murdered her? Did you? I swear to God, I didn't. I did not. You have the most to gain on this. I have no reason to murder her. I can see why people would think I'd have the most to gain. I have no reason to murder her. She was my family. I took, I'd rather have her be here now. I did not murder her. Under whatever I have to, I did not murder her. I did not. I'm 100% honest with you. Did you? I didn't give did her. Did you help her end her life? I didn't help her end her life. Because I'd understand if you I, did. I did. So, I swear to God, I did. Because my dad's dying there. He's saying, Christopher, I want to die. I, I get that. And she I, said it. And, just hearing it, and you love him so much, and you don't know what to do. No, I didn't. I swear to God. Is it possible? I mean, that you got the bottles for Lynn that morning, left it on the table next to her. No. No. One moment was Jessie would say, Lynn drinking eye drops? You must be kidding. No way. She wouldn't even joke about that stuff. Not at all. On the Bible. Then she would return and be like, okay, maybe she tried it once or twice. 
Then, like, she'd come back again for another interview and be like, yeah, she loved, she would always mix her vodka with Visine because she said it gave her a real buzz and Lynn loved drinking Visine all the time. It was her favorite drink. I didn't purposely ever mix anything for her. Never. I swear to God, I'm not lying. She put it in her water once in a while and in her vodka once in a while. She kept trying more different doses. I didn't agree with it. I kept throwing out bottles of water anytime. That's why I told you guys. Anytime that the caps were open, I was throwing them out because I didn't like the idea of it. She was shitting all over. She wasn't dying from it. She was shitting. It was disgusting. But that doesn't, that's not what it does. It's, 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 well, it's, that's it's, what it was doing to her. It was eating out her body because she was literally shitting. She shit all over her bedroom on it. That was the first time she took it, and literally she called me, and I wasn't even there. She called me, and I got there, and she had shit all over her whole room. Dead serious. She couldn't make it to the bathroom. And that's the first time she said she tried it. And I got there, and there was umpteen boxes empty. And I'm not lying. And ever since then, she put it in her water or her vodka. She said the water didn't taste like anything in the vodka. She liked it because she got, like, a little more of a buzz off of it. Just so you know, folks, Visine Tetrahydrozoline does not give you a buzz does not give you a buzz at all. It gives you death. It was as clear as day that Jessie had staged Lynn's death as self-inflicted when in fact she had been rubbing her blind and poisoning her with Visine. Signature. Have you ever looked up anything with Visine poisoning? No. Never, you've never heard about Visine poisoning? From the movie, yeah. That, that's just making someone sick, but you've never heard about someone poisoning with Visine? I've heard... Somebody getting sick with a diarrhea but not poisoning, no. I've never heard somebody dying from Visine ever in my life. Ironically, in one of a, in a huge cell phone, the police would find out how familiar Jessie was with tetrahydrozoline from Jessie herself. She basically would, they would find out she was an expert in the use of Visine poisoning. See, when Jessie was arrested, they got her phone and they also got her boyfriend, a guy named Scott, they got his phone. And so they were looking at texts between Jesse and Scott. Now, by the way, Scott had no idea about what Jesse was doing, that she was a caregiver, wink, wink, caregiver of death, by poisoning her old friend, Lynn, to get her money. Scott was unaware of this. See, this was a curious little incident a few months before Lynn was killed. It was in a text conversation between Jesse and Scott. The two had a huge argument, and he was furiously pissed at her. The argument was over one thing or another, but Jesse was like, listen, I'm really, really sick at the moment. I know you're pissed at me, but I'm ill, so feel sorry for me. She was texting, Scott, I don't feel good. I know you're mad at me and I'm sorry, but I'm throwing up blood. This is two times this morning. I might need to go to walk in. This isn't normal. I feel so sick. And then later, OMG, I just got there, the walk-in like hospital center, and had to run literally to the bathroom and just shit for days. Sorry, what the fuck? I wish you came with me. Nice. Jessie was claiming uh, that the reason she was so sick in this conversation was that she'd been poisoned by an ex-boyfriend, poisoned via Visine, and that she'd been lucky with Visine and be like, oh my god, this is how I got poisoned. So she, she basically was saying she knew all about how Visine poisoning works, claiming to have been poisoned herself. So then later on, when she was being interviewed by detectives about Lynn Hernan's death, Jessie claiming she had no idea about any of this, this sort of poisoning, well, that kind of like shot that shit down coast to coast. I talked to Scott today. Mm -hmm. He told me a really interesting story. Yeah. That a few months ago you guys went out and you came home and you didn't feel well. You th you felt funny. And you went to the hospital mm -hmm. and you told him that you had been poisoned with someone said that they had poisoned the doctor told you that you had been poisoned with Visine. That was somebody that we went out with. But it was just they were just were throwing up. It wasn't they didn't die. He said it was you. No, it wasn't you. Me. He said you went to the hospital. No, I met. I went with my girlfriend who was sick. She went to walk in, but it wasn't me. No, he said it was. <laughs> why would he? Why, why would he tell us that? I have no idea because it wasn't me. Oh, and by the way, the whole thing of her actually being poisoned by Visine by her mysterious ex-boyfriend, that was a figment of her imagination. She was never poisoned by Visine. Um, she just kind of like wanted to use this as a get out of jail free card for the argument she was in with her boyfriend. So he'll feel, feel sorry for her and would stop being annoyed at her. And then it gets even worse. Months later, the police discovered via text messages that Jesse had told Scott that Lynn Hernan had taken an overdose and was in hospital on life support 
and it was not looking good. This was like back in September of 2018, so a good bit before Lynn actually died. And Jessie kept up this lie to her boyfriend Scott for, for several weeks saying, Oh, Lynn is in hospital. She's on death's door. Ooh, it's not looking good. We're gonna have to pull the plug soon. All of that sort of stuff. And then, guess what happened? Once again, Scott and Jessie had this huge argument. Oh, Jesus, is flying off the lid, folks. When was the argument? In October 2018. And what just so happened? Lynn actually died then. That's when Lynn, who was not in hospital, that's when Lynn actually died. Scott was seriously fed up with Jessie, so much to the point he was going to dump her ass. And then that's when, well, Lynn, she took one for the team. Jessie, you know, she overdosed Lynn, and then Jessie was so, oh, so distraught that her best friend, her mother figure had died. Well, Scott couldn't break up with her now. Obviously, you can't break up with somebody when, you know, their mother, almost mother dies. That's real shitty. Scott did learn about this and he was none too pleased. You really have nothing to say to me, do you? No. I don't know what you expect. I don't understand why you're being this mean. It doesn't even make sense. I don't know you, Jesse. Yes, you do. No, I don't. I don't. Nobody makes up lies like that to their person they love. You don't love anybody. I don't love anybody? No, you don't. You don't yeah. lie to people. You don't lie to people and make up so many lies. Uh, about like, one uh, thing. One, no, thing. one thing. Our whole life was not a lie. Yeah, I was. No, it wasn't. How can you even was. say that? Very easily, because you lied to me about something very serious. Then you told a bunch of other lies on top of that to my family about her being in the hospital and being brought back to life. You just kept making up more and more lies. You're diabolical. You're, that's just crazy. So not only did it look like Jesse Kruszewski murdered Lynn Hernan for money, for all of her hundreds of thousands of dollars, she also murdered Lynn so that her boyfriend wouldn't dump her. Yikes. Fuck off. You owe her the truth. I hate that. Yes. You owe her the truth. Jesse. I'm telling you the truth. But how do we know that? Because for three days now, <laughs> you've been telling us lies. And then you've been telling Scott what, lies. What do you want me to lies. tell you or do? I want to know really what happened that day. I, you know what? I'm actually starting to think that maybe Chris is right. That you knew she was trying to harm herself, and you were doing a half-assed job of trying to stop her from doing it. I think part of you maybe actually felt bad and knew that she was sick and wanted it. Maybe that was it, because I don't think you're a stone-cold killer. I don't think you're cold-blooded. I, I don't know, but what I do know is Chris is 100% right when he says the science and the facts aren't adding up. That bottle of water right there had in six... Six How do, you know? How do you know that? Because that's what she put in it. When? She told me. The three days before I threw it out. And she asked for it that morning. Did you, you gave it to her? You gave it to her. Yeah. So this is the hot shot bottle of what? I did. I gave it to her because she said I wanted it. I didn't realize, per se, I knew she told me, okay, I have this one, I have this one, and I have my vodka. And she said, it's the one bottle I have left on the right. Can you please give me that before you leave? Doctor, we don't. Please make sure murder her. I didn't murder her. Jesse Krzyzewski's trial began in late October 2023, and it lasted 16 days. The defense, of course, argued that Lynn did in fact do it to herself. She was in pain, and she wanted a way out. The prosecution, of course, disagreed, and said that on the day of, Jessie had brought Lynn a water bottle she had poisoned with six bottles of Visine and just let her sip away. The deliberations took only four hours, and in a shock to absolutely no one, on November 14th, 2023, the jury found Jessie, now aged 39, guilty on one felony count of first-degree intentional homicide and guilty of two counts of theft of movable property, less than $100,000, but more than $10,000. We the jury find the defendant, Jesse R. Kershevsky, guilty of first-degree intentional homicide as charged in count one of the information. Jesse immediately burst into tears hearing the verdict as she knew what it meant. 
the homicide conviction on its own carried a mandatory life sentence, even without the added five-year maximums of the theft charges. Official sentencing was set for December 7th, 2023, but several delays pushed it back to April 5th, 2024. So what could have delayed the sentencing, you know? Well, guess what? It turns out Jessie, who's an, uh, an expert in screwing herself over, she wasn't done just yet. She even managed to make her own lawyers, legal counsel, say, ah, nuts to that, we're out of here, after they found out what she had done. This huge development came after the court was presented with a letter, supposedly from Jesse, that had been handed over to the sheriff's office, which in, in turn was given over to the judge and the court. See, a friend alleged that Jesse had sent her a letter from jail which, while she was incarcerated. And the letter's contents are woof boy. Jesse wanted her friend to do a lot of things, including, namely, make a recording, uh, record herself pretending to be Lynn so that, you know, they would pretend this recording was really old, which also would prove a lot of, easily be disproven of when this recording was made. But Jesse wanted her friend to, to make a recording pretending to be Lynn and basically saying how, oh yeah, I'm actually gonna kill myself. So basically that, that was what Jesse wanted her to do. Here's some excerpts. Directions. This is what I need. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Something about moving items and a buried safe and to make sure to wear gloves. But this is the juicy part. Quote, I need to see if someone would make a voice tape. I know this is crazy, but I gotta try. It's worth it, because it's my life. If I could, I would. Nobody has her on voice recording. She has an older, raspy, smoker's cough and was sick. Female voice. Always coughing and smoking. I feel like there's programs online to change voices. There's so much technology these days. She was sick and did it two days before her death. Nobody's going to know if it's her or not. It's been five years. This is my fight and chance to stir the pot early. Will you help me? I will never say a word and I will give you a chunk of money if slash when I get out. Cause it's a big favor. And if not, I understand, really. Okay, here's what she wanted recorded. It might have sounded a little like this. <coughs> Jesse, I'm sorry to leave you like this, and I'm assuming you'll be the one to find me after all you have done for me all these times you saved my life. I know if it wasn't for you, I would have been dead months ago. <coughs> and you have been my rock. You're stronger than anyone I know, and I need you to take care of your mom. I no longer recognize myself. I'm sick of being sick. Complaining about being sick and just sick of it all. Lynn Hernan, being of sound mind and body, want to state I'm recording this statement today on Sunday, October 1st, 2018. I have been sick long enough, seen enough doctors to know that I will never be the same, and I no longer want to live my life as it is. I would like it known that Jesse and Jenny, Jesse's mother, are in charge of my final wishes and they know where the paperwork is and what to do. I want to make sure it is known. Just end it like it is still recording or like she's screwed up. There's so much more that's all- Oh wait, no, you're not supposed to read that out. Yeah, so the entire letter, it contains some very specific and detailed instructions to the friend on not only how to forge a recording of themselves pretending to be Lynn Hernan and claiming to be considering hurting themselves, but to also create falsified documents complete with how and why of where to place notary stamps. There was, there was a bit of a hullabaloo then about like who, who wrote this letter, handwriting analysis and all that kind of stuff. But it was pretty, it was pretty easily proven that Jesse had written the letter because the letter was written on Jesse's own trial notes she had used during the trial. She actually sent a letter instructing a friend to commit felonies to help her evade conviction and she used her own court notes to send the letter. It's so unbelievably stupid and funny that it's ultimately as, as good as any kind of convict, whatever she's gonna get. She's gonna get it hella hard now. Jessie is literally the worst possible kind of everything. Worst possible friend, worst possible caregiver, worst possible poisoner, worst possible robber, worst possible girlfriend. She's, yeah, fair play to you on sucking so hard. I mean, she get Lynn's credit cards and then use them to open up accounts, but send, send the, have set the address of where the purchases should be delivered to her own home address. She would go into jewelry stores where she was clearly seen selling Lynn's jewelry and getting for cash. It's incredible. Jesse Krzyzewski, a super criminal you will not meet.
Thank you so much for watching. It uh, really means the world to me. I uh, hope you enjoyed this day or the day. Um, but yeah, here, listen, folks, um, this is the end of the video. So you know what? You do you. I'll see you soon. Because I love you. Mike out.